right, we've got another sequence here, fractions again. So I'm going to look at numerator and denominator. So numerator 1, 4, 9, 16. The next one would be 25, 36. These are just the square numbers, starting with the first square number, so n squared. Okay, <clears throat> notice that if I looked at this, I would say it went up by 3, and then up by 5, up by 7, up by uh, 9. And so we went up by the odd numbers every time. Looking at the next row, I would have a difference of 2 between every term. So notice here that I've got in the numerator, sorry, in the denominator, all of these values are one more than the numerator. My numerator was n squared. My denominator is the numerator plus 1, so n squared plus 1. If you don't see that straight away, what we can think about is that the difference between these is 3, and then 5, and then 7. The difference between those is 2. So once you get to a point that you have a common difference, then you know what type of sequence you have. If the first set of numbers, like we had here, so the difference between this is 1, 1, 1, 3, 3, 3. This is linear. Down here, it wasn't until the second row that I had a common difference, so that means this must be a quadratic pattern. So if you couldn't see that this was n squared plus 1, the other thing we could do is say, okay, we know it's quadratic, so we know it has this form, and really we should use n's here, and that would be our vn, and then we could plug in what we know. We know that v sub 1 is 2, so 1 squared, of course, is just 1, so a plus b plus c equals 2. We know v sub 2 is 5, so 4a, because 2 squared is 4, plus 2b plus c is 5. And then we could also make a third equation, v3, and have 9a plus 3b plus c equal to 10. So you could set up this system of equations and solve, and we could solve this system using our calculator. So apps, polysimil, and now any key, simultaneous equations. We have three equations and three unknowns. Next. And now we could set up our matrix. So one, one, so these are all my coefficients. One, 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 and then solution is two. Four, two, one, five, nine, oops, nine, three, one, and then we got 10 as our next term. Make sure you hit enter so that's keyed in, and then solve. And notice this. 1.3 times 10 to the negative 13 is so close to zero. Your calculator in processing it didn't end up with exactly zero, but this number is so close to zero, you have to know that it really is zero. So ax, an squared plus bn plus c, 1n squared plus zero plus one, which is what we end up, ended up with here. So overall, my t sub n, is n squared over n squared plus 1.